So, Walter, what is a vision? Well, if you can plan it, uh, Alan, then it certainly is not the vision. So that still leaves your question of <laughs> what is it then? <clears throat> An image, yeah. an image um, of sort. As uh, Master Eckert, you know, the great medieval mystic, has described it, he said, uh, when the soul is, uh, wants to explore something, it throws an image of the subject it wants to explore in front of itself and then it enters into its own image. And I think that's still the most appropriate uh, description of an image, uh, of, of a vision that I can think of. So this, this fantastic idea that your soul projects an image in front of itself of whatever is of interest it wants to explore, and then enters into its own image. So now, could you try and put that into language uh, of a corporate? If you were talking to uh, a chief executive uh, in a business, how would you explain to him the what a vision is and how you might it might benefit his business? Okay, we may perhaps use the word fantasy. Try to fantasize about. Uh, the things that are of most importance to you and try to figure out how the world would look like if your fantasies became true. Perhaps you can use the, uh, the metaphor of a, of, a, of a scene, of a stage. You know? Try to stage the desired future and position yourself in that stage that is entering into your own image. See yourself as actor on that stage and begin to move around things and to act. So this is much more fundamental than the normal process of looking one and three and five years ahead and projecting yeah. the business and so on. Exactly. Uh, the, the thing you have been referring to now, that's what I called initially a plan. Planning is sort of projecting ahead uh, milestones that you would want to achieve within a given time. But here that's really reinventing uh, the world you want to live in, be it as an individual or as a company. It's much more, yes. Reinventing, so you're almost getting outside of your current activity or circle. That's right, yes. Um, it, it, therefore it has a lot to do with creation and uh, it's also a word that I'm using very often to, to create a desired outcome uh, for your own working, your own living and of course also for that of your associates. So what benefit can a business get from creating a vision? Uh, the great benefits are innovations, in innovations in terms of procedures, new procedures, new products, of course, new kind of relationships that uh, will move the company into a, a higher level of performance, of effectiveness, uh, of, of uh, capabilities that competition doesn't have, has, hasn't achieved yet. So creativity, uh, you, can, you can say vision development fosters creativity and creativity leads to new positions in the competitive game in the market and therefore uh, gives you competitive av uh, advantage. But British businessmen aren't uh, known for their creativity or their creative thinking. So it sounds as if it might be quite difficult to do that. Okay. Uh, if, if, you know, if, if this is 
Well, this is certainly not only true for British businessmen, but uh, uh, let me make this point clear. Um, this, of course, this basic uh, skepticism is to a certain extent an asset, which we do not want to get rid of. Uh, so it's a, quite a, a matter of adding something to this uh, no-nonsense uh, attitude of uh, really keeping your feet on the ground. We, have, we are entering an age where, as we all know, uh, things are changing ever more rapidly and therefore creativity probably plays a greater role than in the past. Therefore, businessmen uh, need to add this additional uh, ability of um, stimulating c the creative power of an organization. Now what happens if I have a vision as a chief executive, but how, how can I carry my, my team along with me? Yeah, that's a very uh, important question. You may be a, a sort of a, a enthusiastic about uh, the kind of things you uh, envis envisage as being possible in the future, but maybe your, com your, your uh, associates and uh, your workforce has quite different interests. In, like job security may be more important to them than uh, long-range objectives. So the way to start um, the proliferation of your visioning uh, interests has uh, to start, in my opinion, with the question of uh, what matters really to you asked to everybody in the organization that will uh, open up uh, their uh, true interest in, in, in any kind of uh, organized visioning process. You have to find out what really matters to people. But if, if I do that and they say money and sunshine holidays and uh, looking after their children, uh, how does that help me get their motivation for creating a new uh, type of business? Well, if this is the response you get, then you are assured that you are at, down at the level of truth. They are re talking about what really matters to them when they begin talking about leisure time and uh, luxury and, and so on. So then the question is, of course, that's fine. How do we get there? This is completely in line with the company's objective to uh, increase the shareholder value and that's no different from an employee's desire to get uh, uh, higher salaries and, 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 and a more comfortable life. So you may say, look, this all adds up to improving the quality of life and that's uh, the contribution you and we as, as, as shareholder representatives are, are pursuing here. So, but th what does this mean in specific terms? Uh, improving the quality of life. What, in what way can our company and can you as an individual contribute to improving, to the improvement of uh, quality of life? There we are down to the level of everyday activities again. I mean, do you think it's important that we have, I have a shared vision with the top team and, and, and the company? Or can I just, uh, because I'm improving their standard of life, carry them along with what I want? Well, I think we are at this question at a, at a sort of a bifurcation. Either you go, uh, you sort of cajole people into your own personal vision, and then you're leaving the way of truthfulness. It's no longer a true motivation. People are following you out of old habit, out of uh, fear, perhaps for uh, losing their jobs if they do not. But if you really want to uh, unleash the full creative 
uh, power in an organization, you, you need to open up all uh, individual uh, uh, talents, and uh, that means that you have to have the true cooperation of everybody. And therefore, in this case, you, you, you um, uh, have to help people to, to build the bridge between their personal motivation, that is, the things that personally uh, matter to them, link this to the uh, important objectives of the company. So what is a shared vision? I mean, how would we define that? We could say it's an amalgamation of personal visions, many, many, many personal visions that sort of are uh, laid uh, uh, one on top of the other and uh, like a film negative and when you are looking through it you, a, a, a common picture will emerge which which encompasses most of the individual visions uh, that's perhaps uh, when we speak metaphorically um, so that the art of uh, building shared visions is to get out the uh, primarily the first idea the the, the uh, ideas of what people have about their important things and and see, see how this matches with, with what is important to the company as a whole and see if if uh, to what extent this coincides to what extent there are contradictions and then of course removing try to remove contradictions and uh, ending up in something that m most people are willing to say yes uh, what the chairman says or what the chief executive says about our vision uh, as a company that's to a large extent also my personal vision for instance yes I want that we make more money because if we do uh, I will have a fair share in this so in practical terms, mean this means uh, you would have to have a close look at your uh, remuneration system. Is this true? Or is uh, the uh, improvement of profitability only of interest to the shareholders? And does the employee in the company uh, uh, <laughs> Has uh, has no interest in it because he doesn't have a share in it. So how how would I go about uh, creating a shared vision within my company? <coughs> Usually, uh, is there a, is there a, a simple process or? It, 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 it it's not one. I think the process has to be. Uh, created anew uh, with each and every client of yours. Um, so, but let's let's. Uh, I would like to move away from generalities now, and rather talk about uh, more specific cases. Well, first of all, as a, as as an overall rule, I I have never ever entered uh, uh, a, a process of vision de development by calling it vision development. Uh -huh. As I, uh, for the reasons you have indicated before, I, I just avoid this terminology. Um, I have had clients who said, um, you know, we have just had a corporate identity agency with us and they have done a beautiful work. Now I've got a stack of books on my desk. Can you tell me what I am supposed to do now so that we actually have a, a, a corporate identity, a living corporate identity and not only a, a stack of paper? That was one entry point. A stack of paper linked to the corporate identity explanation and... Yeah. Yes, beautiful presentations of logos and uh, strategic plans and so on and so forth. But uh, it it uh, uh, was the, the agency's presentation was seen as high class professional, 
but uh, somehow the the client seemed to be um, at loss when it came to the question what does this mean in practical terms every day well of course we have can our stationery will be reprinted and uh, uh, the posters and the, uh, uh, every uh, aspect of our appearance that that's the easy part but what does this mean to to people's understanding uh, and identification with the company and so on so that was an, an entry point um, that would have to start with a question if the question who are we has to be answered uh, in the way the the uh, CI agency is uh, suggesting how would we then appear uh, in, in our everyday outlook when we are meeting with with uh, customers so that, that 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 would be one entry point into it wouldn't, wouldn't that client have already have gone through the process of uh, describing the sort of company they want to be and how they want to be seen to get to that corporate yeah that depends on the quality of the agency either it it, it is a, 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 a the, the agency may have chosen the or given the pr pri uh, pr pri uh, priority on the p public experience and, uh, and the graphics uh, or at the other end it may have been a company uh, that uh, an agency that really asked the questions as you suggest and those questions, isn't that the same as, as the visioning process? They go exactly in the same direction. It's the, the, uh, such an agency would ask the question, uh, who do you want to be? Uh, who are you f thinking that you really are? So that, that is a question of, of, of being. And uh, a vision really starts or in, I shouldn't say start, but it includes the same question. Who are we? Or if it's a single person, who am I? And then uh, later it, it is, has to be uh, supplemented by a second question. And uh, if, if uh, as such a person as I just described, or a company as I just said, what are we doing as a... Uh, in order to contribute to life or to the improvement of the quality of life so it's it's this basic question who are we and what are we doing and then the purpose question in order to contribute to the improvement of the quality of life I can imagine an agency talking about the first one, but not necessarily the second. I mean, what, what does that bearing does that have on, on, on a corporate identity? What effect do we have on the quality of life? Do you mean of, of the external society, of the internal workforce? Well, a, a corporate identity agency would uh, primarily be concerned with the question of your own un understanding of yourself. So it would uh, raise the question, who uh, in your own eyes, who, how do you see yourself? Mm -hmm. So you see uh, vision development as, as uh, an integral part of corporate identity development? Is, is no, the other way around. Corporate identity, I think, is an integral part of vision development. You can easily pick out that particular question of uh, the identification, take this out of the visioning process and then you have the corporate identity aspect. So vision development is m more encompassing than corporate identity. So what is the purpose of vision development? What can we get out of um, vision development, visioning? Um, as I indicated before, you, you can uh, derive from vision development a corporate identity you can uh, develop uh, a, a research program, a marketing program. You can, uh, in, uh, in, in a long long range strategic planning, can can all be derived out of uh, 
vision development. Um, the advantage of uh, such a basis for these fundamental planning activities is, of course, that the pr question of the purpose is so satisfactorily answered, which is not always the case if you run planning processes without vision development activities. Uh, so you've mentioned this word purpose several times. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 what do you, why is that important, this concept of purpose? Because I think it uh, 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 re releases the motivational powers of people and organizations. Uh, it's it's uh, if uh, a human being understands the purpose of what it is doing, it's supposed to be doing, it has access to its innermost energies, which it doesn't doesn't which uh, is not the case if the purpose is unclear. So ask somebody to do a purposeless job. And uh, before long, that person, that the the effectiveness of that person will come to a point zero. But there are different levels of purpose here, aren't there? The purpose and meaning uh, can be at different levels. There's the I want to take my wage packet home at the end of the week to keep my family and to entertain at the, at the weekends. Yeah. Are you talking at that level, or are you talking at different levels? At all levels. I mean. Uh, we have we have different visioning subjects. It's it's that worker, or it may be the chief executive, it may be the collective of an of an uh, of a company. So we will have to specify first whom whom are we talking about. Uh, as you refer to this worker and his interest in the paycheck, that's completely legitimate. Uh, if, however. If this is the, if this is the only purpose uh, in his life, to make sure that he gets his weekly paycheck, then his motivational powers are different uh, uh, from the other fellow, who is uh, say uh, enthusiastic about his work, because he finds himself uh, part of a larger, more meaningful organization that. For instance, would say, uh, I, I, am, uh, I am part of a, a research team or I'm part of a building uh, crew that is up to such and such fantastic project. A typical case in, in, in medieval times, the, the, the builders of cathedrals, uh, they, they, they were... Ca actually motivated by this sort of higher purpose when they formed a, a building community during the construction period of a cathedral. And I think uh, modern, ca modern cathedrals uh, would have the form of uh, projects, of uh, in a innovative projects to serve purposes of a higher order, such as ecological or Cultural, culturally relevant uh, purposes. Don't you think appealing to a higher purpose within a, a normal working environment um, is going over people's heads or is unrealistic? Not really wanted? I don't think people want the stupid life. If they are doomed to, uh, or, uh, or damned to do it because the organization wouldn't allow any higher purpose. Uh, so, what alternative do they have but to 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 uh, uh, to just to do with the fact that the only purpose uh, will be the money they are getting out? But if you uh, carry responsibility for a working community like a company, and you allow your workforce just to come in and work there in order to get their paycheck. I mean, then you are not up to your personal responsibilities as a chief executive. You allow a company to work at a level which is far below what it potentially could achieve. So, Walter, to, to, to what extent can we all be visionaries? 
I think we all have, uh, to some extent, uh, the capability of a visionary. But some of us are more aware of it and some less. And how can we be, be, be better visionaries? Do you think that that's what the world needs? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I am convinced that this is a major contribution that uh, consultancies like uh, your company uh, could make to the business community by finding, developing ways and means by which visionary capabilities can be developed. So in very practical terms, um, how, can, how can an executive team create a clear vision? We've talked about getting deep into people's uh, ideas of, of purpose and their needs, their wants, what matters to me. Yes. But in terms of visioning the future of the company, for example, how would you go about doing that? Well, I could see two entry points. Uh, the one I have already mentioned earlier on, and that's by trying to find out from all those uh, in charge of the company uh, what they consider of, of importance to them. Um, th this can happen e during uh, regular business meetings or perhaps it would be advisable to take a, a day off and get somewhere uh, out in the countryside to uh, bring this down to earth. The most important considerations uh, among this group of people. The other entry point might be via, via money. That is, look at the, uh, the way they are earning their money now. If they are on a flat salary basis, you may want to have a, a bonus system which is based on their performance. And if you go deeper into it, you will end up by uh, have to have it to de determine their personal their personal objectives, and then of course behind this question of defining personal objectives comes the question: uh, what these uh, people are uh, really interested in achieving within the company objectives, and in so doing you may find that it is necessary to revise the company objectives. And then again, one step further will raise the question, why are we doing all this? And then you are up to the purpose question. So you can see okay, that there are, there, yeah. there are different so, approaches. So as a chief executive, I would like to develop the company so that in five or ten years' time, it includes a certain range of activities and has a certain positioning in the market. How do I get the rest of my team, having personally had that vision, get, get the rest of the team to follow that route or something very similar? Well, maybe by coercion, if you are a very skillful, a skillful manipulator, you can actually get this group to follow you. But if, if you are really honest uh, with yourself and your people and you say we uh, I would like to head a company where at least the, 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 the management group is personally committed to our overall uh, vision then you will first have to find out what is imp of importance to, to your colleagues what and that may, I'm sorry, that may be different from what is important to you. Okay, so, I mean, I can understand that that method might well bring out their ideas of values and the, sorts of the sort of company they might want. Yes. But, you know, if I, for example, in, in the communication sector, want to get into to video and internet and that sort of thing, and someone else is completely, is interested in something completely different. Yes. I've got a problem, haven't I? Of course, and this person also. So you, uh, but that is that problem has to be resolved be, before you have any chance of of uh, achieving this vision. So either this person or you are going to have to modify your visions, or you have to separate. Even though, of course, we might have the same values and the same perception yes. of the sort of company we want to be yes. within that that's right. uh, framework, that sector framework. Or maybe that you come to the conclusion we want actually to do both. 
That's what he wants and what I want. But we are lacking the resources for doing both. Yeah. So, so then the, the, the vision may shift and say, aha, we first have to establish the necessary uh, capital base in order to get to our product visions. It seems that there are different levels of visioning, aren't there? There's the product or market sector visioning, right. there's the company culture and values visioning, there's the... the and the financing yeah. of it. Yeah. But yeah. it all is part of the visioning process. That's right, because a vision has many different aspects um, to it. Uh, uh, I, I th like to think of visions as if they were human beings at a, a, a given stage in, in the development of a human being, uh, as an embryo or a, or a toddler or a, a, a man or a woman uh, giving, uh, becoming parents of a new child, midlife crisis of a vision and so on, and the death of a vision. I find this me uh, metaphor very helpful in dealing with uh, vision development. So could you just uh, encapsulate that for me? Just summarize that? Compare a vision with a human being and its stages of conception, birth, growth and death. I'm a chief executive, and um, we have different. Uh, we have a similar vision in the same company of our long-term company goal, uh, but there are very different uh, ideas of culture. We've come from different businesses, different backgrounds. Uh, how can how can uh, we bring the cultures together? What sort of things can we do to help that? You would have to ask yourself and uh, the representative of uh, the so-called other culture to uh, find out what's the benefit of a unified culture, uh, what are the bene possible benefits of having separate culture uh, within the organization and at what level. If, if your assumption was we do share a common vision. Wasn't yes. that okay? Yes. So, how important is that? Is it that we do it in a uniform? That we try to achieve it in a uniform way? How important is this really? What benefits or what drawbacks does uniformity have? So, try to uh, tr try to avoid the the pitfall that you are uh, haggling over. Uh, the the advantage or disadvantage of culture A versus culture B. Rather, accept the fact that there are differences, and uh, try to find out together uh, uh, how best you could live with this, either by carrying it on or by changing aspects of it. Presumably, by having presumably by having very clear. Uh, objectives and uh, understanding of who is doing which different roles. Right, uh, by, by uh, d trying to find out about each other's fortis and, 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 and uh, weaknesses and say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm very good at selling, so although I, I, he, he may be doing this in a quite different way from what you would be doing, as long as it produces the results, it's, it's fine. But there may be areas where the the difference are actually not uh, beneficial to either side, and, and um, you would have to uh, styles of management, for example. That's too general. You would would this? Are you implying the way you are getting about uh, personal relationships, uh, or well, for the example, way? And one might have an autocrat, a more traditional or autocratic style, yeah. management and workforce. Another might want to try and involve them more and um, uh, get people involved in making their own decisions. 
Well, here again, um, one would have to find out uh, what are the advantages and what are the dis disadvantages in that particular given situation uh, and given the people involved. I mean, if if you have a a person who whose uh, autocratic way of doing things is his natural way and is generally accepted, he may become a complete disaster for the organization if he tried to be a sort of a participative uh, team player. He, because he, he is not equipped to do that. So uh, that would have to be mm, determined very carefully uh, what changes are desirable, possible, uh, and feasible. Don't try, in other words, to put it, put it down on the point, uh, a good team player will ma ever always make a bad autocrat and vice versa. You don't think people can change? No, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, but the, the range of possible change at different life stages for different persons is of course very very different and you would have to be very specific and find out and with a person in question to what extent he, he is uh, willing and capable of changing uh, personal personality traits I've brought my team together we're in this nice country hotel um, we've had our coffee we've had a walk in the in the grounds now we're going to sit down and ask the question, what really matters to you? And this will bring out a whole host of uh, different ideas. How do I process those ideas? There's going to be a whole range of them. You know, what sort of process should we go through to come by the end of the day to a, um, some sort of joint position? Well, assuming that uh people are convinced that you are truly interested in what matters to them. You know, that you have to make sure so that we don't to go through a, a, you know, a facetious exercise. Assuming you have been perceived as, as uh, authentic and truthful, people may come up with uh, ideas, needs, that seem to be a long way from what you as a chief executive has be, have been hoping for. Um, well, it, it, it uh, will be a question of innovative thinking that at each and every uh, important um, desire that people are, or, or aspiration that people are putting forward. How can this be linked to the uh, overall company goal? Is, is, is there a link between uh, sitting on a beach under palms and uh, company profit or product development? Um, staffing changes and if so what what to fill in the intermediary steps and and this uh, would call for a, a, a process of brainstorming perhaps uh, between uh, either in in among the same group or because it uh, is of a more personal nature that you would want to do it on a one-to-one -one basis with the person concerned. I'm told that um, you have used different methods to open up teams of using uh, creative skills like drawing and constructional yeah. uh, model modeling. Uh, what place does this have in the visioning process? Um, there are tools uh, that allow people to express their needs, 
also their fears, their disappointment, in a non-verbal way. The uh, basic benefit of non-verbal expressions is, of course, to bypass the filters that uh, are traditionally built into verbal communication channels. You might also uh, uh, say that um, nonverbal mm, expression tends to um, give access to s subconscious uh, uh, subconscious uh, contents uh, in in the, in uh, people's awareness uh, things that normally would be hidden away. Uh, if you're using such tools, then uh, that, of course, uh, implies a, a, a great um, respect and con uh, consideration and uh, care for, for people involved, because they will be uh, pre presenting uh, things that, under full control of, of their consciousness, they would not have. To. But that is uh, perhaps necessary to get uh, really down to the roots of what matters to people. So Walter, I, I understand that you once uh, worked with a, a large oil company and that you had the senior team working together to actually physically construct um, as a team um, the petrol station of the future. Was this to actually pull out ideas, uh, practical ideas for the station or did it have a broader uh, uh, reason. Now at that stage in the visioning process it was really to bring out practical ideas about the uh, way in which uh, an, a, a service station could look like in the future. And of course by implication what each of the departments would have to contribute uh, in order to make this uh, a feasible perspective. So you can use a process like this to bring out practical ideas within a, a team of people in, a, in an organization for their vision of the future. Absolutely. It's like uh, the zoom of a camera. You can either have it a, a wide horizon that's for the f uh, more distant future and encompassing the whole company, or you can pick, up, pick out a particular area or subject and then enlarge it and actually, uh, as, as I earlier mentioned, to consider it as a stage where, where you can enter as an actor and begin to change uh, the um, uh, elements of this uh, stage. And that's, that's what I would call then practical uh, vision work very comparable to the uh, uh, work of a stage director when he sets up a new play.